All right, Melissa, you ready to get this started? Yeah, let's go. Thanks everybody for joining us today. We're really excited about having you all here today. AC is going through this side right here and completely around to the DC. We're gonna go through our five top recommendations. When they actually have the power supply up there, and it could be several years, it could also be a few months. And TRC, we are, we're a specialty partner, right? We hey, hey, Melissa, before you go, we're claiming to be experts. We don't just make this claim. How do we train and bring people up to that level of expertise? Okay, that's a, that's a great question. And uh, when they incorporated the liquid-cooled power supplies into their system, they didn't need to buy a new trailer. They didn't need to uh, do any uh, innovative design on their end. So they were able yeah. to they were able to take um, the existing cooling uh, mechanism they had. Okay, welcome to another edition of TRC Power Show Live, and we're here in uh, Meanwhile's Value Add Center in Kansas City, Missouri, and we've got a guest appearance, second time guest appearance on the show. We got Kylie here. Uh, we'll introduce each other uh, first. Uh, first, I'm Stephen Lago Marcino. I'm the president of TRC Electronics. I have 25 years experience in the power supply industry, and that experience varies through engineering roles, sales roles, marketing roles of power supplies, and currently I'm president of TRC Electronics. Kai, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, so I'm Kai Lee, and I'm the uh, product manager at Miwa USA. And uh, my job uh, focuses on the, on the North America power supply market, uh, and uh, we uh, develop power supplies products uh, based on the uh, market feedback, market requirements. And I've been in the power supply industry for a bit, uh, for about seven years now. Uh, so yeah, thanks for having me on the show, and uh, I'm uh, I'm happy to have you guys here today at the, at our uh, Value Idea Center. Well, we're excited to be here, and we really appreciate the invitation that you guys extended. Kai has a wealth of knowledge being a product manager here at uh, MeanWell, and he's going to be providing us a lot of great information. Uh, the topic of this show here today is going to be about the value add capabilities. So in the marketplace, everybody know, understands that MeanWell is the number one standard power supply manufacturer in the world. The, nobody comes close to providing uh, the breadth of standard power supply solutions with high quality, high reliability, and really the leading cost performance ratio in the marketplace. And what we wanna to do today is we wanna bring awareness to the marketplace, what the capabilities are of Meanwell with their uh, standard products. And I think this is, really, uh, this is a really great opportunity to learn more about how we can add value and solve uh, power supply related problems for the clients out there in the electronics industry. Definitely. So I'm really excited about this today. We're going to walk you through this, uh, the, the capabilities here today. I just want to remind everybody of a couple things. Number one, uh, if you have any questions, we really welcome them. You can raise your virtual hand, or you can also type those questions in the chat, and we'll make sure we get you the information that you're looking for. And secondly, we have a really special offer today that we're going to be presenting towards the end of the show, so please stay tuned. You won't want to miss this offer. We've got a nice little giveaway for everybody, sponsored by Meanwell. That's exclusively from TRC Electronics. So Kai, you ready to get, get into this today? Yeah, let's get started. All right, very good. All right, so, um, so uh, as Steve had mentioned, today's focus will be on the value add uh, aspect. And uh, we'll first talk about, uh, so here's our agenda for today. So we'll first talk about, introduce ourselves, introduce the Meanwhile Value Added Center, our mission, what we do, and a bit uh, of our background, how we started. And then uh, we'll go a bit deeper into each of the uh, type of services that we offer uh, from the modular power assembly to modify standard power supplies. And then finally, we'll have uh, a deeper discussion surrounding the value added power solutions because that's what we ultimately set out, set out to do. So let's talk a little bit about the purpose of the value add center here that Meanwell has opened up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, so meanwhile, uh, we're more known as the leading uh, standard power supply manufacturer. Uh, but uh, in the past, we, we just offered power supply as a component to bigger systems. And uh, you know, we, we had the term, we were known as the hidden champion because we don't really uh, work as closely uh, or not like about custom designs per se. Right. 
So, so Meanwhile's focus yeah. and the growth that they accomplished was really staying focused on the standard products. Correct. Right. Uh, and that's our, uh, our focus in the past and still our focus is the core power supply business. Right. Uh, however, uh, you know, uh, in the past we had customers asking for uh, different requirements. They wanted to do modifications to power supplies. They wanted, to some, they wanted something more customized, personalized for their applications. And uh, it was really painful for us in the past to tell them, hey, we can't do it. We don't have the capabilities or we don't do that. We didn't have the resources. Exactly. Um, so that's why we, um, uh, in 2019, uh, we, we purchased this building in uh, Midwest. Mm -hmm. And then we set it up as a logistic center initially. And then uh, two years ago, uh, we set up the value added center. Right. Because we have the warehouse here, we have the, um, the products in house to do the assembly, to do the modifications. Uh, so we, uh, we started the value added center. And our goal, of course, uh, is to provide value, right. to add value to the, uh, the meanwhile standard power supplies. So um, our, um, our mission statement uh, is to provide um, prompt, uh, flexible, and high quality uh, value-added services. Right. So we really want to be able to provide that um, quick turnaround, quick delivery from the local inventory if customers wanted something uh, quickly connectorized or uh, the power supply values, output values suggested, we can just grab from the inventories turn them locally and just ship it out, right? Right. Um, so, so many times a, a standard power supply might be very close. as 95% of what we're looking for, but not exactly. And boy, if, it was just a, if there was a slight modification to it, that really doesn't interfere possibly with safety certifications. Uh, there's a capability of doing this. Yeah, yeah. And a common type, uh, part of the standard modified um, uh, solution we offer, of course, is the uh, output current and voltage tuning. Yeah. Um, so you know, standard voltages include 12, 24, those are everywhere on the market. Right. That's our standard offering as well. And all the factory, they're set to those values. So we're gonna get into that a little bit yeah. later in the show, yeah. like some of the specific capabilities. So this is where we are today, right? We're at this uh, facility. It's yeah. a beautiful facility. Mm -hmm. I'm really impressed. It's big, it's 47,000 square feet. There's a lot of, you have a lot of capacity here. You have a, a lot of ability to grow into this and I'm really excited about this. Uh, TRC also has a value add center as well, so this is great for us because now we're we've got another layer, another resource, and your resources are unique and different and even further than ours. So this is something that we're excited about leveraging. We've already been leveraging it. Yeah, and I think we cover different areas of modification so we can work together uh, to provide the best values for the cust for our customers. Right. Um, so the local functions, of course, um, uh, in this facility. Uh, we have the value added production. Uh, we have a mini production line, and we're still expanding. Mm -hmm. uh, we're planning to uh, to add more headcounts this year, and also to utilize more space to add two new production lines uh, later in the year. And then uh, we also have uh, uh, just recently added uh, uh, our design engineer. So we have a new uh, power integration team that is uh, that have local design and R and D capabilities to support the uh, the customers better. Locally, yeah. Yeah, so that's you, locally. So someone may, may ask, why not just have this performed over in Taiwan or China? What's yeah. the advantage of having this here locally versus leveraging uh, the overseas factories? Yeah, def so our uh, overseas, uh, they definitely have um, a very uh, deep knowledge uh, on the power supply designs and applications, but there's the, uh, the, the time zone differences, right? The first few uh, value-added projects that we do and still produce here, uh, we had to work with the headquarters engineering team. Mm -hmm. they, did, they provided excellent support. Um, they had a, no a lot of knowledge about the applications. However, there were a lot of um, back and forth and uh, time differences. Right. So uh, if- Couldn't we, respond quick enough. Exactly. If there's a design issue that we wanted to uh, solve for the customer, we have to communicate with the customer and then relay that back to the factory, we don't get the response until the next day or right. until that night we have the call with them, then we can't get back to the customer until the next day. Right. Right. Um, so we wanted to expand our uh, local capabilities. So we have uh, in-house design capabilities that can just support customer on the spot uh, right. to s answer the questions, uh, work with engineers, talk with engineers uh, to, to get, get the designs uh, uh, more straightforward. Um, so yeah, that's that's the purpose of uh, us expanding speed. Speed. Yeah. So we know that in in power supplies, uh, in, in 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 our market here, when we're working with engineers, and okay, they 
often wait for power to be one of the last components. It's all about speed. Even if it's a standard power supply or if there's some type of modification, you can add a lot of value and save a lot of money for the clients if we can respond quickly. Definitely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, also like like Steve mentioned, speed, right? Because power supply is usually the last component customers mm -hmm. they really finalize or uh, uh, choose. So, all right, so let's talk a little bit about the modular power supply assembly. Yeah, so um, so what we have here is the modular power supply. We can take a deeper look at it later, um, but speed. We talk about speed, and uh, uh, modular power supplies are designed for, uh, as a standard solution to all types of customized power requirements. Right. Uh, because um, the, uh, the output, output uh, channels of these modular power supplies can be fully configured. Uh, they can go from anywhere between like three volts to over uh, 300 volt DC. Right. So any customers that have any voltage requirements, power requirements that are within this range, we can just quickly configure it and then deliver it and the customer can test it and put it into their system. And uh, uh, the good thing about modulars also is we have the local inventory. We can just build it. We don't need to go to the drawing board, do a like, design from uh, uh, ground up, right? Right. Well, this is one of the great success stories for Meanwell and TRC Electronics over the past couple of years are the modular configurable power supplies. There's a couple of things here that uh, we allowed us to have the success. One was with all the supply chain disruptions, Meanwell really did an amazing job of managing that situation and being one of the leaders in terms of uh, lead times, especially in the configurable. So there were a lot of clients using configurable power supplies from manufacturers that did a poor job manufacture, uh, managing the supply chain disruptions where their lead times were greater than one year. And we really uh, saved a lot of clients by coming in and not only having the available inventory, but the ability for us to actually configure here in the United States. Correct. So yeah. this is something where uh, we have TRC Electronics has a configuration, a final assembly center for uh, Meanwhile modular power supplies. And then on top of that, now you're adding your assembly center. And what's the capacity for uh, per week for you guys here in uh, Kansas City? Yeah, so, uh, so uh, we, we, we currently run about 200 pieces per week. Right. And uh, we can go even higher if we uh, free up some other jobs and we don't have any other thing to right. worry about, right? Um, but that's about what we promise uh, our customer and we're able to deliver that. Uh, and we're also sporting a 24-hour uh, uh, sample delivery. Okay. So if customers wants to test a uh, configuration, we can assemble and have, they, they can have it uh, on their desk next day. Yes, Yeah. right. All right, so we're, we also have a 200-piece per week uh, run rate as well. So now we're going to have to have a little contest and see who can increase <laughs> our capacity faster. <laughs> How about we just work together and yeah, make 100 right. pieces per week? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's been a uh, lot of success. And that's another thing, the great thing about the modular uh, power supply, there's so many advantages that we could go on forever, but you're getting a custom configured power supply shipped in a, in a day yeah. and with safety certifications. And it's what the final product's going to be. So this is not something where you're prototyping not a real true manufactured uh, design. This is the final product that you're getting immediately. Correct. Yeah. So it's... From prototyping to the production, it's the same unit. It's not something that we have to design and revise because it is fully configurable and it's certified. Right. Uh, and I want to mention um, that uh, this facility as well is also UL and TUV certified assembly centers. So that can, uh, we're inspected regularly to be able to, uh, to be able to um, uh, assemble these right. as, uh, as already certified products. So, um, and here's just a quick graph. Um, the numbers are not that impressive, but we just started two years ago this facility, and we, we shipped slightly below 1,500 units uh, 2021, and we are uh, growing- Just from locally. Just from locally. Right. All of those are the local assembly. And then uh, we, we shipped over 2,200 units last year, and this year, just Q1 alone, we already shipped over 1,000. And I yeah. think it's also important to note that this is just the local assembly. We can also, uh, have these manufactured at the factory. So once we get into higher runs and higher quantities where we can project further into the future and not have to respond so quickly, we can also supplement this with just being final assembly configuration being accomplished at the factory in Taiwan. Correct. So the factories can also uh, support uh, the final assembled product. 
uh, and uh, uh, like we, we talk about, right, we can work, also work together to support from the local inventory because we do stock a lot right. of products locally. Yeah. Right. So for us, uh, we'll, the ramp up phase of a client will uh, we'll accomplish that locally. And then once they get projections and they get a run going and manufacturing gets fully uh, going, then we're, we're building several thousand uh, per year over in Taiwan. Yeah, and I think uh, uh, we had some, some questions about the MOQ, the lead times, right? The beauty of the modular power supply is something like this. There's no MOQ. That's right. Yeah, it's a, it's a fully customized solution with no MOQ. Right. We have yeah. customers that buy maybe two pieces a month because their project only requires that, that and, it's no, and it's, there's no minimum or quantity. Exactly. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So that was about the only standard thing we do here. <laughs> so the uh, so next type of service we offer is what we call the modified standard uh, power supplies. So we're taking the standard meanwhile power supplies and we're tuning them. We're right. tweaking them uh, based on customers' requirements. So these can be uh, cases where, uh, uh, there, so our factory also, even though we're fully standard, uh, we still do some modifications based on the standard products in the mass production level. Uh, however, uh, customers need to test the samples first, right. right? And if we have to rely on the factory for the samples, it will take air shipment uh, another week, and then when it gets to the customer, it's two weeks for a modified sample at least. Right. Uh, but since we have the local inventory here, uh, and then we can also do the in-house modification, we can support the modified samples or low, low quantity prototype runs from this facility uh, without having to meet the factory's MOQ, the long lead time, and all that. Yeah. yeah, and I think a, a great advantage that might not be uh, that obvious with that kind of quick turnaround is often an engineer might not have their specs exactly dialed in. And then once you get the first prototype, uh, maybe there's some adjustments that need to be made and the response time that can really be compounded where we're making that adjustment and quickly turning around. There's not this huge delay of back and forth from a factory in, uh, overseas. Exactly. And uh, in addition to that, uh, we also have, have more flexibility right. locally. So uh, we had some cases in the past where a uh, customer, uh, they had specialized um, or specially made parts that they wanted to incorporate into their design. And they can just consign that to us locally, just right. ship to us and we put it together uh, instead of having to find sources in Asia or ship right. overseas. Right. Yeah. So that's a great point because in that situation, you have a, uh, a, a client could have a local source in the U.S. Now you have two, one of two options if it's going to be manufactured overseas. Either we've got to ship it overseas or find another source locally overseas and get it qualified and make sure that that's going to work and that's not always that can be complicated at times especially if they don't have uh, a supply chain over there yeah exactly and uh, i think we can show some examples of like things we do right okay yeah that's great so uh, so for example so we have um uh, external adapter products so this is one of our um, standard offerings. It's a desktop, um, uh, 60 watt, 12 volt output. And we have the specialized, I mean, the standard 2.1 by 55 uh, 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 connector. Right. But customers, sometimes they like, they like it to be different. They want a 90 degree uh, adapter, for example, or they want slightly bigger or slightly smaller. We, we stock these cables mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. and then we can just uh, change out the cables for the customer. Right. And it will be the exact same as whatever the factory is made for the uh, mass produced uh, models. And then uh, another example, like I mentioned earlier. So where, yeah, yeah. before you move for, yeah. forward with that, so the, the advantage there is traditionally, there'd be a minimum order quantity from the factory to do it overseas mm -hmm. and in full lead time. Yeah, right. Yeah. And you're, so you're talking about like 30 day, well, for a standard, a modified, maybe like 45 day lead time to build then to bring them in for, uh, by, by ocean. Exactly. And Difference here now. What's the difference? So uh, no MOQ. Okay. Yeah, we stock these parts, the common ones that customers use. If right. it's more specialized, we can also order from the factory. So we order these parts ahead from the factory. Mm -hmm. And then we are also able to um, stock these parts if customers will know it's a, So we have some customers that need 100 of these per right. month, for example. They are not able to place like, for example, our factory usually have 1,000 pieces MOQ on modification like this. They're not able to take all 1,000 yeah, no minimum order quantities. And uh, uh, a good example of how we support the customer is, so if the customer wants to buy this from factory, right? traditionally, they need to meet the MOQ. Maybe some smaller customers cannot handle 1,000 pieces order at once. 
Um, so what we can do is maybe they just need 100 pieces a month. Right. So we can stock the cables for them, and then we can just um, uh, swap them out locally from the sender units, and we ship 100 pieces to them uh, every month. That's great. Yeah. Uh, well, so we know we had a lot of clients requesting that, and that was amazing flexibility that we can offer them now. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, here's another example of uh, the modifications. So for this specific mod, uh, we had to add a European plug okay. to, to the customer because they're shipping this to Europe. But what's more um, or impressive is... Um, this normally comes with the standard model will be just the stripped and tinned. Yeah, so the so standard model is very short, 300 millimeter strip and tin. Customer wanted one meter, that's a European plug. So we can uh, add that here. And then, um, so this special cable, this bulky cable here is actually consigned by the customer. Okay. It's special, special made, they have fuses in, inside and then they have a very specialized uh, connectors right. on the output side. So what we ended up doing is using a, a accessory, a meanwhile accessory that it's a waterproof uh, cable junction right. that Was we're able like to- the CJ4? Yeah, right. the CJ04 uh, junction, uh, cable junctions. Right. So we just connected it together to the, uh, to the cable and then that happened, and then customers ship these to us, and then we just make it locally. Okay, excellent, yeah. right, yeah, that's great. Yeah, and uh, um, so uh, other, other examples, I have a PCB power supplies here. Uh, this one's actually conformal coded, so uh, this is just also to show uh, that we can also do conformal coding, and then if customer needs different output voltages, we can just tune the output voltages here as well. Right. To, yeah. So that's great, because you have better flexibility, because conformal coding can, is built to order from the factory. Correct. So here now, if we've got conformal coding, we need to respond quickly with shorter lead times or shorter quantities, especially during the prototype phases. Mm -hmm. We have the ability to do that here locally. Yeah, and with conformal coding, it's uh, a lot of times customer didn't know they needed it. Um, they ran into failures from the moisture, from the, the dust. And then uh, we recommend it uh, to the customer. So they want to test it, verify, of course, so we right. can quickly uh, modify a unit and ship it to them for them to verify it works. Right, oh, that's excellent. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's keep going here, Kai. So yeah. I know we also talk with junction boxes too. Yeah, so, uh, so this, this unit here, we just talked about the cable changing, right? Right. But uh, also customers may want to have this installed in the uh, buildings or the conduits. So we off offer uh, junction boxes that we can add on to the units to, uh, to make it happen. So what's the advantage of the junction box? So the junction box is uh, installation. So okay. the junction boxes allow the units to be field installable mm -hmm. and uh, to provide the sufficient safety to do so and the ease of uh, installing them locally. So all the wiring uh, is in that junction box, correct? Correct, yeah. Uh, and then what's not talked about is also the, uh, the PM bus, CAN bus, right. optional models. So meanwhile, we have a large selection of uh, more intelligent uh, power supplies, especially the higher wattage models that we maybe offer standard PM bus but we offer a optional CAN bus model. Right. Uh, traditionally, you had to you know, order them as a specially made part from the factory. But locally, we can swap out the board and we can run the tests here and then uh, uh, we can support the customer's application surrounding the PM bus and CAN bus here as well. Oh, so that's interesting. So you could change the, uh, the, the PM bus to CAN bus here locally, especially for prototypes, so we don't need to build the order and wait, you know, 12 weeks to bring it from overseas, correct? Exactly, yeah, and uh, that's uh, all because of the design of the power supply. Uh, the main difference is just a communication board. Mm -hmm. So it has a different IC, different protocol on it. We can just swap that out and then we just need to recalibrate the unit and then uh, to make sure it works correctly. That's amazing, yeah. that's awesome. All right, so uh, moving on to the, the last type of service we do, and this is actually uh, what our uh, final goal is uh, mm. for, for this facility, and that is the, uh, the value-added power solution. So uh, what, what we define a power solution is something that solves the customer's issues. Right. A, a solution that is surrounding power and that solves all kinds of customer issues. And uh, we're able to support the customer's power solutions from mechanical design to safeties and then also to, uh, to consulting about the usage, about the installation, and then in, even the internal component design, we can also support that. And then we also have the final assembly and test here. Uh, so the goal, of course, is to deliver the entire system to the customer. Yeah, so you, these engineers are really heroes in our world where they're designing products that are totally improving the quality of our lives. Mm -hmm. They're innovating uh, products 
they're, they're saving lives. So anytime we can add a little value to a power supply to, to make their mission a little bit easier, uh, we have these capabilities now. And sometimes, you know, there's something that might be very complicated for them and, and will complicate their job, but we could simplify things by just simply adding a little value that's really going to make their jobs a lot easier. Yeah, it's, it may be just a little value, a little change, a little addition, but it means a lot to the, uh, to the customer. Uh, because you it know, might not be in their wheelhouse, it might yeah. not be in their expertise where like, hey, that's not something I want to really get into because that's going to really, we're not really efficient at that, but mm -hmm. we, can, we can provide that. Yeah, so customers, are, we, we interface with all kinds of industry, all kinds of customers. It's interesting, right? But they're not focused on power supply, right? right? They, don't, they don't necessarily have a power team in-house or a power supply expert in-house. And uh, they, they want to focus their resources on designing their own IP, their own products. Right. They don't want to devote a lot of time on designing the housing for the power supply, how to connect to the power supply, how to use the power supply. So that's where we come in. So we can make this process of designing the power supply and using the power supply as painless and right. as, as easy as it can be for the customer. Because we see the engineering resources are really limited today, right? Yeah. And it's really important that there's the opportunity to leverage our engineering resources because this is our expertise and mm -hmm. we can do it much faster and eliminate all that pain for them. Yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, surrounding the power supply, of course, uh, is uh, one of the biggest uh, discussion or consideration is the uh, thermal performance. Right. And uh, a lot of times customers, when they design their enclosure and then put just put the power supplies inside, they run into a lot of thermal issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if we can help them design this enclosure, design this ventilation system, uh, whether it's conduction cooled, uh, force air cooled, or liquid cooled even, then it saves them a lot of t time testing right. because the thermal systems do need to be tested thoroughly under different conditions. And it's a lengthy and quite complicated process for the customers. So it, the difference is trial and error or take a proactive approach and leverage expertise, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very good. So let's keep going here, uh, Kai. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, going forward, I think we want to talk a, 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 about a couple of cases well, to showcase what we do and uh, what kind of things we can do, right? But here's just a, a, the process, a, the process, the overview of the process. So um, uh, initially, so we, we're working with TRC closely on providing these value-added power solutions. So TRC would be the frontline interface with the customers and then they bring us the inquiries uh, that are too complicated for the standard power supplies to to satisfy. Right. And then we will have the uh, the meeting and the calls with the customer together with TRC, and then we go to the drawing board. We right. review the technical requirements, and then uh, our uh, design engineers locally will work on the data sheet, uh, the design, and then we provide the uh, quotation. And then sample build follows after customer reviewed and is okay with the, uh, the build. And of course, there will definitely be some um, back and forth between the technical, the, the, the sample and then what was required, right, actually. Yeah, and even during the technical requirement review, we're gonna, we're, so we're, we're building a relationship with the, with the engineering client and we're discussing ideas back and forth and, and making sure this is going in the right direction, mm -hmm. making sure we completely understand their needs and, and coming up with a solution that's really specific to solve the problems yeah. that they're facing, correct? Correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, as mentioned earlier, sample uh, build locally. Sample build locally. Right. <laughs> yep. Quickly. Yeah. And then after the samples approved, uh, we have to go to safety sometimes. Um, and uh, meanwhile, uh, we also have uh, uh, a safety team uh, tell, in Fremont. Tell us yeah. about that. How does that work? So, uh, for the power supply safety or the component safety, I think safety is usually one of the most um, uh, headache right. headache point for the customer. And uh, there and are why a lot is it of a headache. There are a lot of requirements, um, a lot of samples, a lot of testing involved, uh, a lot of back and forth with the uh, with the safety engineers. So just to fill it, finish it up, safety certifications. Meanwhile, takes care of it. Then we go once all that's taken care of, it's certified. We're building what you a production sample. Yeah. So now we've got the final product, it's approved, and we, we get that approved, and now we're going into production. Production locally here. Uh, that, that's amazing. Yeah. So I know that you have a couple of case studies you're going to share with us here. 
Yeah, so, uh, so the first, uh, first case study is uh, uh, for a customer that was uh, using uh, warehouse robots. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've worked with this customer for a long time now. Uh, initially, they used one of our UHP 2500-watt uh, unit uh, uh, and 1500-watt unit in, inside of their robot to charge it, but it's slow, slow charge. Right. They needed like overnight to charge it to full capacity. Uh, so now they're, they're ready to scale up their operation and they want to move to something like a charging dock. Okay. So, so their, their requirements, um, they needed um, the charging dock to be able to support 480 volt AC three phase input. And then they wanted the, the output to be up to 20 kilowatt uh, for, the, for the charging dock. And then they also needed the whole solution to be UL1554 64 and FCC certified. And then they needed some IP, um, uh, uh, IP protections around the unit as well. So here's what uh, here's the the unit itself without the enclosure, the outer enclosure, uh, and uh, so basically this what we put together for the customer was a 20 kilowatt fast charger okay. that we had we designed the uh, the 3D housing for them, and then we're also going to support them locally uh, with uh, Brian, our engineering uh, manager, who is also uh, in charge of our uh, safety. Okay, great. Uh, yeah. So we will we send them to the uh, to the UL uh, and work with UL to get get them tested and it's actually in the process of getting FCC and the UL set certified right now. The whole the whole design, the whole enclosure uh, as a finished product. So will that be UL certified or will it actually be UL approved? In that? It will be UL listed. UL listed. Yeah, right. it will be That's a great. UL listed product. So it's a final product. Correct. Uh, so inside of the unit, as shown in the enclosure, there are three of our standard SHP 10K-55. So each unit is about uh, 10 kilowatt and right. 55 volt output. Uh, but since we are uh, connecting them in parallel and we're putting them in such a tight enclosure, uh, there was some power derating after our testing. So, uh, so but it was enough to, to meet the customer's 20 kilowatt um, charging requirements. Okay, yeah. that's great. Yeah. And uh, um, so we uh, work along with the customer from the installation and maintenance aspect. And then uh, the, the outer uh, enclosure design actually had a lot of the, how, how they wanted it to be removable mm -hmm. and to, to make it easier for maintenance either on the air filters because they're robots, customers service them every year as well. Right. So they, they are also going to, in their manual, maintenance manual, putting manu uh, maintenance required for the power supplies that we, we put together. So we designed according to, uh, to their actual usage case. So they, it's IP52 design, that, is that to, was that because they had concern about dust? Dust, right. yeah, because it's uh, it's going to be located in the warehouse. Okay, there's no way to control how the warehouse, how humid, how dusty right. uh, the warehouse is. So uh, they needed the IP52 to ensure that it lasts. Right, and you have a lot of heavy fans in there, so you're going to be mm -hmm. moving a lot of air. You're going yeah. to be moving a lot of dust. Yeah, and we have uh, air filters installed at the uh, the both the input and output of ventilation. Oh, yeah. very cool, very nice. Yeah, and then so uh, so we from the start uh, we worked a lot with the customers uh, technical team, and uh, we got down to as detail as the board level designs and the control modules because customer wanted to also uh, interface with the charger from their robot. Right. So how it works is basically ro their robot will control the charger. It tells the charger any more current, any more charge. Uh, and then the so charger will open more. It's intelligent, yes. Right. And it is enabled via the, uh, the CAN, bus, CAN bus communication protocol. So, so that's something that a lot of engineers don't realize. They can leverage the communication capabilities with CAN bus or PM, PM bus, right? Exactly. Right. And uh, um, so this is a pretty detailed uh, design then. Yeah, yeah. We work with the customer about how the communication uh, uh, controls commands, how they're going to interact with the, custo uh, with the power supply and the charger. So there's a lot of back and forth in this design process, I'm quite yeah. sure, right? Yes. Yeah, we had uh, weekly oh, meetings. Bi-weekly meetings, yeah. Week Bi-weekly meetings with the customer, yeah, to, to go over any, uh, like a launch checklist of items that we need to discuss about and to resolve. So in a, in a complex value add design like this, what was the, what was the design uh, phase? How long did that take the, that interaction that you uh, cooperating with the client? Yeah, so this project actually, now we're about to go into uh, the safety, right? We, we, mm -hmm. we've, uh, uh, the customer has tested the samples. Uh, so this has been going on over a year. Okay. And it's a very lengthy process and we're willing to work with the customer That's to, to, to work through this. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, about the safety, 
uh, the safety is the UL1564, which is the standard for uh, industrial battery chargers. And uh, there's a story, very interesting story, is that um, uh, the, the UL, UL people, when we, they first re did the uh, construction review, they didn't like the way the, uh, the output cable was interfacing with the charger. Right. Uh, because the standard called out that it needs to be fixed or like a fixed installation. It cannot have a detachable charger cable or cord. Right. Uh, and then uh, our uh, UL engineer worked with the customer's UL engineer and then we challenged their principal engineer saying like we proved how, how safe the design was and then the, princ the UL principal engineer actually uh, reviewed the design uh, more, in more intensively and then they, uh, they, they were able to allow the, the design. So that's important when you're going through the UL process is having the knowledge and the confidence because sometimes you can run exactly. into some obstacles where one person's opinion might not be actually accurate and you've got to be able to almost challenge and contest it. Exactly. And uh, uh, the last thing we want to tell the customer is, oh, you all said we cannot do it and then right, we, right. we have to change it, right? But it's, it's just how the customer chose to uh, to use their product and it was very essential to them. Right. So we stuck to that and then we uh, we work with the customer together to challenge UO and then finally they were able to give in. Very yeah. good. I'm sure the customer is very happy about that. Yeah. All right, and then finally we have uh, uh, in-house uh, testing stations. We did a lot of burnings and tests for the customer and then the final products, we will be uh, packing them in wood crates um, from here and then shipping out of this facility. Yeah. So you were able to even do a lot of the, the testing for them? Yes, and we have dedicated um, burning solutions set up for this because it's 20 kilowatt uh, and it's quite high power. Right. So instead of using the traditional uh, burning and load, we're setting up our actually our in-house uh, bi bi-directional power supplies that does the energy recycling. Right. So we're able to save some um, uh, energy while <laughs> bringing the high power. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, right. I love it. Okay, so I mentioned that we were going to have a free giveaway today, and I wanted to show you that here. Um, so the free giveaway is we have the Meanwell NMP650 modular power supply kit. This is really cool. Uh, you could scan the QR code here or the link that we just put in the chat. You could click on that link to qualify for the free giveaway. In this case, it's over a $500 value. We've got an NMP650 modular chassis. Uh, I think right, we have, is that, is that the NMP650? So this is the, this is the, high, uh, the, the older, the MP series. Oh, this is the older one. Yeah, uh, he's similar. got the older one here. He, I got to talk to Kai about bringing a new product on. Uh, so we had the NMP650 chassis. We've got five output modules, all the standard modules. Uh, we've got all the hardware so that you can assemble these and also even an AC power cord. So it's a great offer. Please scan the code or click on the link and you'll be, uh, you'll be entered to win this free giveaway. We've given away a few of these already and engineers love playing with these, especially if they're considering using a configurable power supply. This allows you to play around with the different voltages that are available there. And you can get more familiar with the product and even become more confident in that type of solution, see the real quality of the design of the NMP650 series. So I know that you have another case study here we're gonna share with the audience. Uh, we have a power solution case study too. We'll yep. talk a little bit about this. And maybe you could just talk first about what were, the, what were the challenges the client was facing and, and how do we uh, provide value by, to overcome those challenges? Yeah, so, um, so the customer, uh, they, they're, as you can see in the picture, this is their older system. And they actually do smart... This uh, is what they were doing before we helped. Before, and they were doing smart windows. Okay. Uh, so windows that are able to be tinted and color changing just based on electrical current. Right. So, uh, and uh, here, actually, there's, they're already using Meanwell power supplies. So in this big junction box, there are 32 of the thin rail power supplies. Each of those outputs is going to a, uh, a window. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, so the challenge the customer was facing was that this was too big. The, the housing for this uh, control box was too big. They wanted to target the residential market. Okay. And uh, they needed to stay within certain widths for the cabinet to be able to fit in between the beams of the building, building codes for the residential market, not the commercial one. Right. So uh, they needed a smaller solution. And, uh, um, and that's, that's uh, where we come, come in, right? And they had very strict requirements about the, uh, the output of the power supply too. They needed to be class two. Okay. 
uh, so that they can save class number two UL class two so UL that's why, ten yeah so that's why there's so many individual power supplies because it's got to be less ninety six watts or less correct amps five out fan, five amps output or less yeah so uh, so the installation for the system is much easier without having to go through conduits and uh, all the professional wiring and all that right so anyone uh, any contractor can wire it basically okay. if it's class two. Yeah, so we proposed a turnkey power solution for them that is actually uh, narrower, and then we used uh, modified units to meet that class two requirements to, to fit it together, and that's, uh, where, that's why we used the, the XLG-100 series, um, and because it was uh, very compact, and uh, we, can, we were able to modify that to meet the class two requirements, and then we can certify it as under class two as well. So the XLG-100, how, how do we modify it? Uh, so the XLG100, traditionally, there, traditionally there's only uh, 48 volt and high voltage DC models. Mm -hmm. So the customer needed the class two, so we modified the power, the current limit okay. to, to stay within the class two limit. With and five we, amps. Yeah, for right. the five amps, and okay. we certified it as a class two. To uh, so now, in this case, it's a bit special for the UL safety because the entire assembly did not need to be UL certified. Mm -hmm. They just needed the outputs, each channel, each of the outputs to be UL class two. Right. So, uh, so that's why we're and able to, to just certify the power modules inside and assemble this and it works for them. It looks a lot cleaner. Yeah. And then this is uh, uh, actually a 16U and then they will stack them on top of each other. So they, they're concerned about the width. So now uh, we are just uh, uh, separating them for, for ease of manufacturing and installation. Uh, rather than having a two-layer design uh, right off the bat, we do a single-layer design, and they can install another layer on top later oh, that's, on. That's yeah. excellent. And then they so then they have the IC, the IEC inlet for AC. The IEC inlet for the AC, and right. then the top is actually sixteen of the Molex connectors that each has a uh, individual output to 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 the windows. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then and so terminal blocks. Yeah. For the DC output. Yeah. Uh, for the DC output, it's actually Molex connectors. Okay. So yeah. Okay, but so they're right. all on the top. That's together. great. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so from the technical consultant aspect, we work with them on um, various um, revisions okay. about what kind of power supplies to use, uh, about you know uh, the temperature, uh, temperature testing, and then uh, they also mandated us to stay as a fanless system. They didn't want to have a fan, especially that they're targeting the residential market. Was that for noise or for noise? Uh, right. Mostly for noise because. Um, uh, uh, in order to, for us to meet some of the, the temperature requirements in such, such a tight enclosure with that many power supplies, right. uh, it, needed, it, it was generating a lot of heat. Right. And then um, and that, that's also part of the reason we, we stepped down to a 16-unit design and then have them uh, stacked together instead of having everything crammed into a single, uh, single enclosure. Right, so you recommended that uh, sticking, mm -hmm. limiting the 16 because of the heat yeah. challenges yeah. and using the uh, XLG series which is really an LED driver uh, type of series that it, that has better temperature spec ratings also correct exactly which gave you the flexibility there correct? yeah they were uh, fanless and they're fully encapsulated so they get they can dissipate the heat really well right onto the enclosure the outer enclosure as well so that's the um, that's I think the third or fourth uh, revision that we arrived at that actually worked for the customer. Did we start there or did we actually? No, we, we actually didn't. We, we considered many different power supplies. Right. Uh, many different ways of solutions. Um, and uh, uh, most of them required fan. It was just generating too much heat. So, uh, so luckily we were able to uh, test XLG and then make it work. So some of the process is also about Okay, oh, it's almost sort of a negotiation with the engineer's design and like what they need to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Where we're proposing a solution, and here are the advantages and disadvantages of a solution, and maybe they then you have to outweigh what they are and reconsider what this power solution is going to be because mm -hmm. we've got to address what's most important. Exactly, and uh, there um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a negotiation. But it's a lot of um, uh, discussions and uh, Collaboration. collaborations. And I think customer... The, the so negotiation starts the purchasing department. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, the customer sometimes had to make you know, some compromises on you know, right. um, some specs they can give up on. What's necessary, what's must have, and what's nice to have, right? Right. So we work along, uh, along the way with the customer, and then we arrive at something that worked. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. That's great. All right. 
So looking at this here, we got yeah, and then I think we covered this before. So the the XLG we just apply uh, we applied for the uh, safety, and then uh, each of the output is a class two output, so it works for the for the customer safety, and then their major the most important requirement for them is class two, because if uh, the power supplies are not class two, their solution would have to be you know installed by more um, more expensive uh, contractor contractors and use more expensive wiring and uh, conduits and whatnot. So, so you, class number two reduces the cost of installation significantly. Yeah, because it guarantees the uh, safety from the power source. Right. Yeah. It simplifies everything yeah. for them. That's great, Kai. Mm -hmm. And then uh, finally, uh, we we have this um, uh, 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 ERG five thousand okay. uh, bidirectional burning system. So we set up a special test rack to uh, to burn the 30 to, 32 channels together for the customer. How long do you uh, burn them in for? Uh, so we burn them in for uh, fifteen minutes uh, each each assembly. But these power supply units are already burnt in at the factory. Right. Yeah. You, you, you're just burning together the, the system. The system. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so that was awesome, uh, Kai. I really appreciate you uh, having us here today. We really uh, love all the information. The Value Add Center here is really impressive. Kai, really impressive facility. I'm really looking forward to providing clients more uh, value here and really expanding the solutions that we've been providing uh, with MeanWell. TRC and MeanWell have been partnered for over 20 years already, and uh, you know it's really just getting started. Yeah, so I want to you. thank everybody for joining us today. Really appreciated having everybody. Sam's got that, uh, that link in the chat there. So if you'd like to schedule a call with us, we'll get you taken care of. Everybody, thanks for uh, being patient with us today. Mm -hmm. And thanks for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of TRC Power Show Live. Thank you, everyone.